I'm sorry, I'm saying um so much. Okay, I gotta stop doing that. Um. <laughs> God. Hi, welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. Um, if you are here because you are an expecting mom, or if you're here because you are subscribed to my channel and you watch my videos, um, I just want to let you know that this isn't the type of content that I normally make, nor is this going to be a mom channel. Um, my content is more generally related to art and plants, and then sometimes like I do vlogs. Um, but I just wanted to share my experience considering I am currently, well, I'm about to be 32 weeks pregnant. I just had my baby shower on Zoom and um, I think it went pretty well. So I just wanted to share some of what we did for our Zoom baby shower to make it a success um, so that maybe you have some suggestions or ideas on how to do your baby shower and you know you can take what you want from um, my experience, I am probably going to be doing some videos that are related to my experiences with becoming a mom. I am a first time mom um, and pregnancy and childbirth, um, probably mostly because we're in the middle of a pandemic and I don't know, part of me just wants to share some of this information um, for myself and posterity just so that I can look back on it and remember what my experience was like, but also, to, uh, I guess, to kind of document it and give other people an idea of what to expect. Um, so yeah, with that being said, if you're here because you're an expecting mom, I just wanna say congratulations. <laughs> um, you know, I know this probably wasn't the situation that you saw yourself being in if you ever were going to be pregnant, whether you were planning it or not, um, but regardless, you know, I just want you to know that even though your family probably won't be there because of this pandemic, um, you are still able to have a good time. It doesn't have to be a whatever occasion. You can still make it festive. As you can see, I did behind me. This is my backdrop for, um, for my baby shower. If you are watching this right now and you're hoping that maybe the pandemic will be over by the time you have your baby shower, um, I would just suggest to expect that you're going to have some version of a virtual baby shower, um, whether or not it's on Zoom. That way at least you're not disappointed and just holding your breath waiting to see whether or not this thing, you know, gets any better. I found out that I was pregnant in January and I was hoping that I might have been able to have an in-person baby shower. You know, lots of people were hoping like, hey, maybe this thing will kind of dissipate in the summertime and, you know, that didn't really happen. So, uh, you know, once we got around to June or at the end of June, I was like, hey, it doesn't look like this is going to end anytime soon. So we might as well just go ahead and plan a virtual baby shower. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the tools that we used to um, make the baby shower happen, some of the fun things that we did like games, um, things like this backdrop, um, and how we managed to do gifts, registries, blah blah blah, all, all the nitty gritty that went into planning this baby shower. I'm going to let you know what we did so that you know you can take um, what appeals to you and you know for your own baby shower some of the pros of a zoom baby shower they're inexpensive <laughs> this backdrop cost about 50 bucks and that was the entire expense for us for the baby shower my mom paid for the um the backdrop it was a photography backdrop that we found on amazon it was about 30 bucks and then the balloons my sister bought on Amazon. We bought a balloon arch kit. That was about 15. And then I bought the Target, I bought the Oh Baby letters from Target. That was about six bucks. Um, so that's one of the awesome things about Zoom baby showers. Like, you know, if, if you were bummed that you're not gonna have an actual baby shower, just count your blessings. Cause a Zoom baby shower is really inexpensive. It's almost free. 
You don't have to pay for food for anybody. You don't have to pay to set up all sorts of crazy, like, you know, games and activities and decorations and whatever else. Um, you don't have to clean your entire house. The only area that we had to make presentable was this area right here. <laughs> Everywhere else, it was basically a disaster, you know? <laughs> so you don't have to be like, eight-ish months pregnant trying to clean your entire house the day before your baby shower and you know, exhausting yourself um you know you just set up this area and call it a day um try to set up your area also just quick side note try to set up your area in front of a, a nice bright window and if you don't have a nice bright window um then i don't know maybe you can add this to one of your expenses for your baby shower and this just return it after um but if you if you don't have a bright window get a studio lighting kit like a photography lighting kit um i bought one on amazon several years ago it was only 50 bucks and it comes with like three lights and the sh shade things or whatever and light bulbs and everything and if you don't see yourself using it ever again then just return it and call it a wash and basically it wasn't really even an expense um so yeah that's some of the awesome things about a zoom baby shower you can have almost anybody you want at a zoom baby shower because of the amount of connections that you can have and uh, to a zoom meeting and uh it's not costing you any money to have them um, so whereas with most events you would want to consider like how much it, you're going to be spending because you have a certain budget to work with and you can only afford to have so many people or maybe you only have space at your house or whatever event space to have so many people with the zoom baby shower the, everybody else is at their own home so you don't got to worry about any of that so that's a plus <laughs> so you know there are some perks to a zoom baby shower in a lot of ways it's easier than having a real baby shower and you know if you're gonna be eight months pregnant you might just be counting your blessings that like oh thank god i didn't have to host like 50 people because that would have been like so annoying <laughs> um i mean of course if you would have had it at somebody else's house then it might not have been such a big deal but it's still you never know it, you may have just wanted to lie in bed most of the day so anyways moving on I don't know about any other virtual meeting platforms, but Zoom enables you to have up to 100 people on a Zoom meeting at a time, even with the free version. If you want to have more people in that, which I don't know why you would want to have more people in that, because that's a lot of people, um, for a baby shower at least, but I don't know. I don't know your life. If you want to have more people in that, you can pay to upgrade your Zoom account. I don't know the pricing on that. You'll have to look into that. but. With the free account, you can have up to 100 people connected, like, you know, on different Zoom ID, whatever. Um, you can have a, up to 100 people on the meeting. So since you can have so many people and it's not going to cost you anything to have them there, um, I would start putting together a guest list and think about who you would want to invite now because you know, I didn't really think much about it until about three weeks before. And you know, there's a lot of people that I was kicking myself like, oh, I should have invited that person. Oh, I should have invited that person. Oh, I should have invited that person. Like, you know, you start, you know, when the whole, basically the whole world is open to you, up to you, it's it becomes really difficult to figure out like who, to invite because you know it's like you can invite pretty much as many people as you want so who do you want to invite and you're like um my grandma i don't know like you know so start thinking of people that you would want to have there because odds are as time goes on you'll think of more people that you would want to invite um so that later on you're not like kicking yourself because now it's like three days before your Zoom baby shower and you're like, well shoot, it's too late to invite this person because now they're gonna feel like they have to get a gift and they only have like two days to figure out what they wanna get and like shipping probably isn't gonna get it here in time for me to open it for the baby shower, which is like kind of like 90% of the point of a baby shower, right? 
Um, so yeah, start thinking about that. Start making a list because odds are you'll think of more people as time goes on. Evite.com right now, they do have the ability to set up a virtual party. Um, Evite.com does allow you to put in the information ahead of time for your Zoom baby shower. And I'll go ahead and insert a clip of how to set up your um, Zoom meeting ID and all of that. And like with, you know, a couple tips on how to get your account set up so that everything goes smoothly the day of the baby shower. Hi everyone, real quick, I just wanna cover um, how to set up your Zoom account and your Evite so that it makes, um, you know, your day of the baby shower really easy and smooth. Um, so real quick, before we get to this point right here that you see on the screen, you of course are going to want to have a Zoom account and download the Zoom application on your computer. And once you log on to the Zoom application on your computer, this is the screen that you'll see. So to get started, we're going to hit this little drop down menu next to the part where it says new meeting. And we're going to check the box that says use my personal meeting ID. So that's going to allow us to use, you know, your basically your account number um, when you start a Zoom meeting. Because I believe if you don't click on that, then it will randomly assign a meeting ID each time you start a new meeting. So for this one, we want to use your personal meeting ID. You're going to go up here to the meetings tab and right here where it says edit, Go to advanced options and then um, we're gonna disable the waiting room okay so basically what that does is uh, if you haven't used zoom before automatically there is a waiting room so the host has to let people into the actual zoom meeting but if that is enabled then they can't see what's going on in the meeting until they're let in by the host um, this is basically to prevent you know anybody who might hack your guest email or whatever to from um, getting onto a zoom meeting but since we're sharing this link through evite.com your guests won't have the direct link to the zoom meeting so uh, we don't need the waiting room because evite com will just have a button that they can click to join um, and that'll make it easy for your host too because things might be kind of hectic when you are getting started with the zoom meeting and if this is enabled then they're going to have to let each individual person into the meeting and it can be quite cumbersome depending on the number of people you invite um, you can I, I would not enable them to join before the host you know for obvious reasons um, because then they might not know what to do and they'll just be sitting there staring at themselves. The next thing that you may or may not want to do, just depends, is mute participants upon entry. Um, this might be a good idea because some people's devices might be picking up feedback or there could be a lot of noise going on in the background and whenever there's noise on other people's computers it tends to cut out you know, audio from other participants when they're talking, so then you miss stuff. So that might be a good option that you wanna consider. Automatically record meeting. That may be something that you wanna do at the start, um, depending on how you're gonna go about um, the, the party. If you do breakout rooms, I don't know if this really works that well, um, but you know, if you don't do breakout rooms, then I'm sure this would be fine. Um, if you don't want to do this at all, you don't have to. Okay, so we're going to save. Now we're going to show meeting invitation. And you're going to copy the link right here where it says join Zoom meeting. So you're going to go to evite.com. Um, so of course you would want to put in all your information here. And then to make this... A virtual event you're just going to check this box right here that says make this a virtual event um, you're going to select the option to enter your own video chat link and paste it in here otherwise it'll do um, yeah so if you do the evite 
video chat, then it only allows you about, it says it's best for 12 people or less. I'm assuming you probably are gonna wanna have more people than that at your baby shower. Um, but you know, just depends on how you wanna do it. So um, if you wanna have more than that, you're gonna wanna enter in your Zoom link here. And then of course, finish filling this out and gift registries and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you would go about setting up your virtual baby shower um, for the Evite. And we're gonna go ahead and head back into the video. The link will become available to your party guests the day of the baby shower, shortly before it's supposed to start. They will not be able to click on it an hour ahead of time or whatever. I'm pretty sure it becomes available about 30 minutes to 15 minutes beforehand so people can start logging on and get there early. I just wanna let you know this because like, for example, my grandma was concerned because she didn't know how to get on the Zoom meeting and she was like, I need the information, I need the link, I need the whatever. And my mom was like, you don't need it. It will become available on the Evite. So, you know, regardless of who you're inviting, just let, you know, I would suggest letting people know the day of, or, you know, maybe the day before that that link will become available on the Evite so they can connect to the meeting through the Evite. They don't need to be, you know, harassing all sorts of people to get your Zoom meeting information, you know, 10 minutes before the meeting starts. As the host, you can go and send a message to all the guests who have RSVP'd, yes and maybe, and you can let them know like, hey, just wanna let you all know that the Evite, the Evite will make the link for the meeting available shortly before the meeting is supposed to start. So don't worry, you can connect through the Evite. <laughs> Another thing that we decided to do for our baby shower was instead of doing some sort of drive-by situation, we set up a drop-off area the day before the um, the day before the baby shower. I set it up right on my front porch. My front porch is like upstairs, away from the street, so I felt pretty comfortable setting it up on my front porch. And I just set it up the morning before. I didn't get too crazy with the decorations. I just had like a few things. So we set up a drop-off area for those people that didn't want to purchase through Amazon directly. Uh, and we made that space available for them to drop off at their leisure before the baby shower. That way people could stop by throughout the day. And I left the, ba the, the drop gift drop-off area up until like the next day. You can use that to you know, provide a safe area for people to drop off gifts. Like for example, people may not want uh, want to buy stuff on Amazon because maybe they don't have Prime, so then they have to pay for shipping. Or maybe friends who are a little bit older, they don't have an Amazon account because maybe they don't want to give Amazon their information. You know, some of our friends that have an Amazon account, but they wanted to get gifts at Target because they have the Target red card. Part of the reason too, that we wanted to make that available was so that people could, um, you know, have fun with the whole gift wrapping thing. And then we just brought the gifts in, like as they were coming in, and we opened them up the day of the baby shower. If you're not able to have a drop-off area at your house for whatever reason, then maybe you can have somebody that you trust um, make a drop-off area available at their house and then bring over the gifts for you like the you know shortly before the baby shower so that you know people not a whole lot of people are having to come into contact and everybody stays safe the registry um i set up just one registry on amazon overall i liked the amazon registry for a couple reasons hey guys i just wanted to step in here real quick because uh as i was going through the footage i realized that i was doing a lot of rambling and um i learned some stuff since i recorded what i was going to say about the amazon registry that actually might make your amazon registry experience even easier because um, there were some things that i 
I didn't think about and I learned later that would just generally make it easier. But um, so one of the first things being that when you set up your Amazon registry, um, I think it would be a good idea to add a co-registrant. So your co-registrant, so your co-registrant can um, have access to the registry and maintain it for you and, and edit it. One thing that people were having difficulty navigating was um, if they got me something that was on the registry but they got it at let's say a Target, how do they let me know that they purchased that item without giving away that they were the one that purchased it, you know, you know what I mean? Um, so I ended up having to tell my co-host to let people know, notify you if they purchase anything from the registry and then I'll check it off the list. But since then I found this co-registry, um, co-registrant feature that will allow your co-host of the baby shower to uh, edit that for you without even having to tell you. So they can just check stuff off the list. Another thing that I learned since filming this um, that probably would have made it easier was I probably should have created an entirely new address, address specifically either to, um, you know, mom and dad to be or baby so-and-so, um, however you want to put it with your address, or you can even use uh, a somebody else's address if you're opting to have it sent somewhere else and then brought over to your house, whatever uh, you are going to do. Um, but that way you can differentiate stuff that you order versus things that are ordered from your registry for the baby shower. And that would make it a whole heck of a lot easier because let's just say I accidentally opened a couple gifts way too early, not realizing that I probably could have just made a new address addressed to my baby from the get-go. And that probably wouldn't have happened and would have saved everybody a lot of headaches. Um, yeah, and then another feature that's really cool is uh, group gifting. And you can set up the threshold for this if you want to like lower it or what have you. But basically, group gifting allows people um, to pull together their money or like contribute to getting a certain item off of your registry that's more expensive. Um, and then you can redeem those funds for that item as an Amazon gift card and then purchase the item. You can also edit individual items and enable group gifting by going to the edit tab and then this one was already purchased but if it wasn't I could click this button and enable group gifting for this item. If I purchased it I can mark it as purchased or you know I can, I can make all the edits here to uh, items on the registry. So that was a really cool feature that I found about uh, the Amazon registry and another one was the uh, diaper fund. A lot of people who um, were not able to get a gift or just didn't have a whole lot of funds were able to contribute a small amount to the diaper fund and I thought this was really cool because for you know for us personally we're planning on doing cloth diapering and one of the cool things like People have an aversion towards cloth diapers, so instead they would contribute towards the diaper fund and we would be able to redeem those funds as a gift card and then purchase the diapers that we wanted um, that were cloth. And then, yeah, I think that's that. Another cool feature that I liked was um, that you can add items from other websites. So let's go to... Target. Go. Um, if you have the Amazon Assistant plugin, I don't know if this is available on every browser, but it's available through Google Chrome. You can click on the Amazon Assistant uh, button and then add it to your baby registry. Just make sure that you have the, the amount or what have you on your baby registry and then it'll show up on your registry um, and actually if people do purchase it it will update on your registry so I thought that was pretty cool 
So just as an example, here is an item that I added from a different website that is not on Amazon. Somebody went through and purchased it for me as a gift and when they purchased it, um, Amazon marked it as purchased on the registry. When you are setting up your registry, especially if you're a first time mom, you probably have no idea what to put on your registry or what you even need. So they actually walk you through a checklist like this and they walk you through all the stuff that you might need um, when you're putting together your registry so that way you're not having to like totally figure it out and put it together from scratch they give you some ideas um, and you know some of them are good some of them not so much you can also track your thank yous and returns by going to the thank yous and, and returns tab um, so if people purchase you a gift and later when you're going to send out thank you cards you can go to the details tab it'll tell you the sender's name and it will also give you their address so that you can send them a thank you card and once you've sent them a thank you card you can check the box thank you sent so that way you can even keep track of your thank you cards and last but not least is all the benefits that you get especially if you have um, a prime account so as an amazon prime member you can get the welcome box. You get a 15% discount when you check off everything in the uh, Amazon registry checklist. You get a 20% discount for your first year off of diapers that are eligible for the discount. There's all sorts of nice perks that you get that come along with an Amazon baby registry, especially if you already have Amazon Prime. Um, so I think it, you know, is a really good value and just so you guys know um, when I first filmed this I, I, I said pretty much all the same things <laughs> um, but since then I became an Amazon affiliate and um, I found out that they do have the ability for um, it, it for to give me a link so that if you sign up for an Amazon registry through my link it, they give me a s small commission no cost to you um so i just wanted to let you know that there's a link to that in the description box below um i still wholeheartedly recommend an amazon registry whether or not they were giving me a commission because i thought especially during this uh pandemic it's a really good option and they have all the features that you would need to for your guests to be able to shop and send you things uh remotely from a distance um and one of those features is gift wrapping, which I'm about to get into in the video, but I just want to let you guys know that um, so that you can be aware of that. And uh, I think that's it. Another reason that I liked the Amazon registry was people have the ability, you know, depending on where the item is shipped from and the size of the item, they may be able to have the item gift wrap for like before it's sent to you. And this is something that I would include in the information in the evite that if people want to purchase through Amazon, um, they all they need to do, I think, is check the box when they're checking out that says this is a gift and it'll give them some options. Like it'll include a gift receipt. They can send a personalized message to you just like they would in a card. And I, uh, if it's coming from an Amazon facility, then they um, sometimes will have the option to be able to pay for gift wrapping for that gift. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. I kind of forgot about this option, so I didn't really tell people about it on the invite. And it wasn't until I was opening gifts for the baby shower that I was like, oh, I should have told people that they had that option because a lot of people didn't know that that was an option. Um, so anywho, this is a box that I received and this is, this is how basically it came, right? It looks like a normal Amazon box and you'll open it up and inside there'll be a little, uh, envelope that looks like this. This will have, uh, the note from your gift giver and it will have the return receipt information in there and what I did with that is I ended up um, 
stapling together later on all the little notes from people and uh, it also has like I, I stapled it along with the um, gift receipt so you're gonna want to hold on to this set this aside and then your gift wrapped gift will look like this and it'll have a tag on it it says a gift for you and then inside will be like the same personalized message that the the person wrote in that section for you um, to give with the gift so this will say like whatever it is that the person wanted to say so like for example this one says can't I can't wait to meet your new sweetie. Congratulations and enjoy your gift from so-and-so. So then you have to open it like this and then you get your gift item. So this is a really good option to let people know just in case they want their gift to look nice um, and they're having it shipped directly from Amazon to you. Uh, which is this is also a really nice option especially if your family and friends live far away so this could still make it like fun and enjoyable for you and your family to um, to you know send you gifts through Amazon so that's another reason why I like the Amazon registry make sure you have somebody there to help you with opening your gifts in hindsight what I would have done is let people know about the gift wrapping option and then have my mom pre-open the gifts and look and see what it was um, and like you know maybe take out because you know oftentimes like it'll come with like this little note thing or whatever and then you could like put the note like she could tape it on top of the box so that you know who it came from before you open it retape the box closed if it's not gift wrap and if it is gift wrap then we could take out that item and add it to the other gift wrapped uh, presents. So in hindsight, that's what I would have done. I think it's a really great option and you know, a reason to set up an Amazon registry. If you have any reservations about that, you know, I, I would suggest it during this time. So the day of the baby shower, one thing I would highly, highly suggest well, I don't even think it should be a suggestion. This is just basically a must, is you need to have a plan of what you're gonna do. Um, because when it comes to Zoom, it can be kind of awkward when it comes to a party because it's like you're not really sure what to do. This is very new for a whole lot of people. It's like, how does this work? Do we just like talk amongst ourselves? Do we all try to talk to this one person that we're here for? Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what we're supposed to do right now. Nobody was really sure what to do because nobody knows how to do a Zoom party. This is new for everybody. Um, so one thing that I would suggest is have a plan of what to do. You kind of need to guide people through um, what's going to happen. And you know, you don't have to like bombard people with all sorts of information ahead of time. What me and my family did is we got an app called Adobe Spark. It's a free app and we put together an agenda of what the plan was for the baby shower. And periodically as people were coming in, the hosts of the meeting would screen share that agenda so people know what we were gonna be doing. They would like put it up for a few minutes and take it down. They chat prior to the, the party starting because you know people were showing up like you know 15 20 minutes early and just kind of chit chatting amongst themselves and then you know of course people started to kind of flood in for the actual um party this is basically the flow of what we did once the party started at three o'clock or whatever time it is you chose to have the party we put people into breakout rooms now if you're not familiar with zoom breakout rooms is basically you know you have the main session which is where everybody is there and you can take that main session like let's say you have a hundred people on your zoom meeting um you can take that main session and break people up into smaller groups so it's like you're taking a group of like 10 or 20 people and you're putting them into their own separate session so we started breakout rooms so that 
I could talk to people like on in like smaller groups and people could talk amongst themselves in smaller groups and it wouldn't be so awkward because part of the awkwardness of um, having such a large number of people in a main session is that whenever somebody talks like other people will cut out so it's like maybe somebody will be mid-sentence trying to say something and somebody else will talk and it'll cut them off so then you don't hear all of what they're saying while we were in the breakout rooms i wouldn't suggest doing breakout rooms for more than like 20 maybe 30 minutes or so just depending on the number of people that you have just let people know that that's what's on the agenda if you're gonna be in breakout rooms for 30 minutes then try to have the host move people around a couple times um while they're in the breakout room so that people aren't stuck with the same people the whole time trying to make conversations for like 30 minutes um anyways the host has the ability to move people through breakout rooms so what you want to do is you know have the host move you through each breakout room so you have an opportunity to talk to people on a more like smaller basis um that way you can actually say hi to people how are you doing they can ask you questions have you had any weird cravings is this a boy or a girl blah 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 blah, blah. i don't know whatever <laughs> whatever questions they're gonna ask you i was in breakout rooms talking to people on an individual basis meanwhile my mom was going through the breakout rooms and um sharing a game but the game was guess mom's belly measurement so prior to the baby shower just a few days before i took a photo of my, me and my belly and i took a measurement of the widest part of my belly all the way around and then people had to guess what my belly measurement was all the way around so that was something that like you know she just got to share with them and people would like write down their guesses or whatever and then you know later on it would be revealed what the answer was so that gave them something to do and and then while we were in the breakout rooms um my sister who was hosting the meeting she also shared our guest book it was a video guest book so what she would do is she would go into the breakout room she'd be like hi everyone i'm so and so um just wanted to share with you the link to allison's guest book it's a video guest book so um you know let me just show you how this works she would screen share her screen and she would show them like so you know this is the guest book this is how you do it click here 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 and then you can record a message for Allison and it will be saved to her guest book um, so it was really cool because later on I got to go in and view all the, the videos that people left for me um, one thing that I would suggest is I would give people the link ahead of time actually so that people have an opportunity to leave a message because I think for some people it was a little bit difficult and it, they might have had technical difficulties or maybe it's just like difficult to navigate. So yeah, there's just a lot of like logistical stuff with that that was a little bit difficult. That's what I would suggest is if you do the video guest book, put up the link on your evite ahead of time. Maybe when you um, send people a message letting them know like, the link for the meeting will become available around 15 minutes before. Before you log on, we'd like you to uh, sign Allison's virtual guest book. And um, that way people have a chance to do it ahead of time. Uh, because if, if you try to share the link afterwards, it's like party's already over, people are like moving on. Most people aren't gonna wanna stop and share a, a video like do the, the video recording thing that was the first portion of our baby shower was the breakout room i'm socializing my mom's sharing the game my sister's sharing the guest book um and then after that we stopped the breakout rooms we had two more games planned for people so the first one that we did was one that my sister uh came up with which it was guess the candy in the, in the diaper. Basically my sister, she melted candies and then she smeared it <laughs> in the diapers. <laughs> and uh, then she, she took a photo of the inside of the diaper. And then she numbered each diaper, like one, two, three, four, five. People had to guess the candy that was in the diaper. And then whoever got the most candies won. So we played that game 
And then after that, the second game that we played was Name That Tune. So how you would go about playing Name That Tune on, um, on Zoom is when you go to share your screen, there's actually an advanced option where you can share audio only. I gave my sister a link to a playlist that I had made and the playlist that I made was all songs that had the word baby in it. <laughs> like I didn't do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or whatever. I did I did other songs. I'll leave the link to the playlist that I made below if you want to use it for your baby shower, you can. And so my sister, what she did was she had Spotify up and just keep in mind, you don't have to have Spotify premium to be able to do this. If you're doing this, if the host is doing this on their desktop, then they just need the Spotify application and they can play any song they want in order with the free version on the desktop. You can't do that on the mobile application, but you can do that on the desktop application with the free Spotify. So I gave her the link to the Spotify playlist. She shared her audio. She got on Spotify and she started playing clips of the song. You want to play really no more than four or five seconds. Like it really depends on the song. Some songs like you literally play two seconds <laughs> before because uh, you don't want to really, um, you want to try to avoid having words in the song because oftentimes the opening words and the voice like just flat out gives away what the song is. You want to make it like a little bit of a challenge. Um, so just play like, you know, go through the songs and you want to cut it before it starts saying any any lyrics. Um, so like for example, oh, Baby Shark, if you haven't paid attention to the beginning of that song, like that's a tough one. That was really funny. People were so confused. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was the second song. We had 10 songs. People were able to count one point for the song and one point for the artist if they got them right. So it would have been two points per song for a total of 20 points, 20 possible points. So that was really fun. So go through and play those teeny, teeny little soundbite clips at the very beginning of the song. And then when you're going back through, you would play more of the song until it gets to like, usually you want to play until it gets to the chorus. Sometimes it takes too long to get to the chorus, so you just want to like cut it earlier. Yeah, but th then it's like really fun because then people are like dancing and having a good time and I'm over here like shaking belt baby bump or whatever. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, so you would be revealing like, okay, Song number two was this song by this person, play the clip until it gets to the fun part of the song and then cut it and then move on to the next one. My sister was having difficulty at least like with her microphone so she kept cutting out a lot so people weren't able sometimes to hear what the song was. So at the very end when she went through all the songs, she screen shared the entire playlist so that people could see it. Um, and, and double check to make sure they got it right. So yeah, we did name that tune, and then after that, we did gift opening. Um, if you were able to get somebody to open your gifts ahead of time, so that way they could like maybe, you know, at least make the process faster by having the gift pre-opened and then maybe just like putting a piece of scotch tape over it and then having like the little who it's from, um, thing take it out and tape that on top um, then it should go fairly quickly I think you would only need about a half hour I didn't account for that amount of time so if you don't have somebody who's able to do that for you ahead of time and like kind of pre-open gifts to see if like any of them have been gift wrapped by Amazon or whatever and like kind of to help expedite the process then maybe account for 45 minutes to an hour of gift opening. Um, the last part, what I wanted to do was um, the host has the ability to spotlight somebody. Spotlighting is when they double click on somebody's um, screen, like in Zoom, like you have the gallery view so you can see everybody there 
and then you can uh, double click on somebody to spotlight them and that makes it so that everybody who's on the Zoom call will be seeing that person. So, which by the way, when I was gift opening, I was spotlighted. So, you know, my sister, she double clicked on my screen so that I was spotlighted and I was what people were seeing the whole time. What I wanted to do was um, go through each person's screen and spotlight them so that they could like wave, say goodbye, you know, if they wanted to say anything else, like congratulations, you know, you're gonna be a great mom, blah, blah, blah. Try to get to sleep while you can, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, I wanted to be able to do that, but it wasn't really communicated very well that that was what we were going to do. My sister, kind of what she said was, um, you know, if anybody wants to say anything, just like use the raise your hand function in Zoom. Um, I think what we probably should have done prior to that was let them know like, okay, like we're gonna give everybody an opportunity to say goodbye to Allison. We're gonna spotlight one screen at a time so you have an opportunity to like say, you know, hello, goodbye, congratulations, all that kind of stuff. And then we would have moved through each individual person. But I you know, I think once the gift opening is done, then, you know, that's kind of, like people are like, all right, cool, bye. You know, a lot of people unfortunately left the Zoom meeting before I could really like say anything to them. So that was, for me, that was kind of a bummer. That's why I wanted to spotlight each person so that they would have had, so that I would have been able to see them. Um, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, the last thing I think that I wanna say, I was undecided if I wanted to record anything like because you have the option when the meeting is running to record the zoom meeting um and i was undecided if i wanted to do that looking back i probably should have done that you know i think it would have been nice especially since nobody was there to be able to like take pictures and video and blah 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 um i think it probably would have been a good idea to record the zoom meeting for later so that way you could see like I don't know, maybe more of what was going on during the Zoom meeting. I'm not exactly sure how it works, especially when you're spotlighted, but you never know. It would have been probably nice. So anyways, that's what we did for our Zoom baby shower. A lot of people told me afterwards that they had a lot of fun and then that the, the um, games were really nice. You know, of course there are other games that you could play. Um, I would just suggest trying to make it games that people can get involved with instead of having it be something where it's like they're just watching you do something or whatever because you know part of what i think what made the zoom baby shower fun was that people were able to get involved and have fun with it um so you want to try to consider that um i think that's pretty much all the tips that i have for you if anybody else who is watching this video has done a zoom baby shower and they had things that you know maybe they like or didn't like you know I'm sure it could go either way maybe you can share that in the comments so that other expecting moms who are trying to put together their zoom baby shower or you know family who's putting together a zoom baby shower um, can kind of reference that and see like you know what's working and what isn't and you know I'm sure probably by the end of the pandemic we'll be Pro Zoom baby showerers, <laughs> um, and you know, who knows? This may be something that people start doing on the regular after the pandemic. Because I mean, it's not totally uncommon for people to be living out of state away from their families, and I think it's a great option that I'm sure not a lot of people would have thought of prior to the pandemic. And you know, it was nice because like my sister was able to attend, and she lives in Pennsylvania. I live in California. My husband's sister was able to attend and she lives in New Jersey. So it was really nice to have those relatives and, and friends to be able to be there, part of it, when normally they may or may not have been able to, to make it. Um, so anyways, I hope everything is going well for you, your family, and your growing families um, at, during this pandemic. And you know, just hang in there, make the best of it, you work with what you got, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say something else. Oh, 
I remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, all I had to do was keep talking. Um, goodness, sorry. I, I get really excited when I explain things and I get out of breath anyways, and then being pregnant, I'm also out of breath, so I'm like extra out of breath. This is, this is what it is. 